Page 39, cord caper. Mm. Here they're talking about rotation. It's where you're, it's like turning a doorknob, something like that. I'm exaggerating, it's really a very slight motion, but the point is you're rotating. Well, you, I play by weight, so I'm simply shifting weight from one side to the other. I do that all the time. So, um, in this here, uh, chord, broken chord in the right hand. Well, it, I just play the top two and the bottom, and I'm, I'm, I'm just rotating, transferring weight from the thumb to the fingers, back to the thumb to the fingers. And it's the weight that's pushing the notes down, not me. And then the second one, measure, it's the four chord. That's not the rhythm I know, but the point is that's the, what I'm doing in the, here. The left hand, look at measure four. You're here. One and two and three and four. They don't need the little three there. It's third finger anyway. You don't, they don't have to give you all these finger numbers. Just you're in this position. Stay there. And I'm transferring weight. The bottom, bottom. motion but I'm transferring weight it's like I'm walking transferring weight from one finger to another to another it takes a little bit of time to get accustomed to it but believe me once you get accustomed to it it's so nice because you can just play and play and play and play and play and not get tired at least not in the fingers and all because you're not using hardly any muscles to speak of in the fingers the weight's doing the work if I get start getting tired it'll be in the shoulders and all because I'm holding up my arms I don't want to drop all the weight on them and that's what usually happens with me so here at the beginning again let's get the rhythm one and two and three and four and again just temporarily take out the tied notes ties don't take out the notes and play all those eighth notes one and two and three So forth. Then once you get that, put the tie back in. You just hang on to the first eighth note instead of playing. It's one and two and three and four. One and two and when I first was learning to do this kind of thing many years ago, I, I would drop my wrist a little bit, although at the time I played tense and I didn't flex the wrist. But I could still I could still feel the beat. And I would do that. I would and with each with each eighth note one and two and three even on the tie note I would still feel that and two and three and then I could gradually speed it up I mean ultimately you want to play by feel anyway eventually I hope to get in the music so this is all mechanical at first but once you get it it's changed We find people do is they don't want to do the mechanical and all that they say just play it for me let me hear it and that way they can hear what it sounds like and say oh, okay and then they copy it I, I'm very much opposed to that I really wish you wouldn't do that get into where you can read the music yourself and figure it out yourself and get to where you can feel it then you've accomplished something and then in the last measure there in the right hand you have that four sus F sus four a one sus four chord remember that we've had it in C it's simply where you have a, a one chord and you take the middle note and you play the fourth instead of the third this is the third of the, that's the fourth so it's a su suspended fourth because normally we'd want a five seven would be here but instead of that we're playing the head. that's all that is comes in handy occasionally. I don't care for the fingering in the right hand in this piece, but it's good practice. Uh, this going from measure to measure, you're using three and five in the right hand here. I don't care for that. I can alter the fingering for that uh, to make it easier, but we need the practice on this. So let's just go ahead and do it. You can play this quarter note staccato if you want. That way you got more time to move. That's fine. Articulation, they don't give you any. I suggest you add some staccatos and some accents and things and have fun. It's
it's up to you and your imagination. You got to get into the interpreting the music after you get to know the piece and you're not worrying about notes and fingering and rhythms and all that. Then you start playing around with it. If they don't give you any articulation, it's wide open. Do what you want. As far Music notation is incomplete. It's always been incomplete. It gives you the basic general idea of what, what they had in mind, what the composer had in mind. It's up to you to turn that into music and there's a lot more you can do with the music than what's printed on the page. So don't limit yourself to what's that. Oh, I can only do this because that's what it says. You need to do what it says, but you can also do more than that. Here it doesn't say anything. There's no articulation at all. Well, it's wide open. Whatever you want to do. Accents and staccatos and all kinds of things. Whatever. They give you a dynamic at the beginning of moderately loud. And that's the only dynamic they give you for the piece. So what it is, is you're in the moderately loud range, but you're not going to stay exactly that. You can get a little louder and softer as you feel it. So it's feel it. Get to know the piece. They do give you staccato at the end. Make sure you do that. But you can do staccatos and some other stuff too. Speed wise, it's moderately in the range. So, where, where, what do you think moderately? Depends on how much wine I've had to drink or coffee or whatever as to what's moderate for me at the time. It changes from time to time, day to day. Somewhere in the middle, not fast or slow, just somewhere in the middle. I like to play it with you very slowly to double check these rhythms and all. Uh, I'm not going to do any dynamics. I'm not going to do any st staccatos to speak of. I'm just going to play the notes. That's all we're doing here. Very mechanical. So I'll give us four counts. Let's play it together. One, two, ready, and go. And one, and two, and three, and Thank you.